Hey guys, so in today's video we're going to hit a bit of a milestone with this editor and actually get some basic editing working. So you can see here now I can select a range of text and delete it. I can backspace over text. I can forward delete text. I can delete over paragraphs. I can type and I can insert paragraph breaks. Okay, I can also insert a soft line break now. Okay, so you can see this is a line break within a paragraph, so it doesn't actually start a new paragraph, it's just within the paragraph. And they're all the basic edit operations that we need. So let's have a look at the code. Um, it all comes down to these two methods. There's a delete method and an insert method. Delete takes a text range, insert takes a position and a string to insert. Um, before we look at that, I just want to explain this function because we'll be seeing this in a minute. This is a function to help uh, iterate over ranges of a sequence of runs. So to explain this, let me just run again. You remember that each of these paragraphs has a code point index, which is the offset from the start of the document, a length, and they are consecutive. Okay, so the offset and the length of this one is equal to the offset of this one, and they continue on consecutively. And often what we want to do is we want to manipulate a range of text over these paragraphs. So in this case, what we want to look at is, so get intersecting run takes a read only list of anything that implements I run. And I run is just anything with an offset and length. So I've implemented this, this interface on the paragraph uh, class. Okay, so you can see it just maps to the code point index and the length. Okay, and implements I run. So this, this method takes a list, in this case of paragraphs, and you give it a range uh, of code point indexes into the document, and it will return for you a enumerable collection of sub runs, okay, which is this class here. So each sub run has an index, an offset, a length, and a partial. And just to explain what they are, let's say we were manipulating this range and we were to call get intersecting runs for this range of text. What we would get back would be a collection of these sub runs. And the first one would be the, with, would have an index of zero, meaning the first paragraph, an offset of four, a length of however many characters that is, and a partial flag of true, meaning that it's a partial part of this paragraph. The next one would be index one for this second paragraph. Offset would be zero and the length would be the length. And the partial flag would be false because we're, we're manipulating this whole paragraph. And then the last one would be index two for the third paragraph, offset zero and a length of five and a partial flag true. Okay, so this, this helper function just lets us iterate over a section of the document and find out which parts of which paragraph are affected by a particular range okay and there's a forward version of this get intersecting runs and there's also a reverse version get intersecting runs reverse which we'll look at now if we look at text document and go to the delete function you'll see we're calling get intersecting runs reverse for the range that's been passed in and we're doing this in reverse because it's typically easier when you're deleting because the offsets the indices of the paragraphs aren't getting shuffled as you're trying to iterate forward through the document. So by going reverse, we don't, we're not affected by changing indices. So if it's a partial run, we just delete the specified range of text from that text block. If it's not a partial run, we just delete the whole paragraph. And then that is the bulk of the work of deleting. The final bit we've got to do is if we were to actually delete this range of text, we want to join the end of this paragraph and the start of this paragraph into one paragraph. So what we do is we look for the end of the paragraph being deleted. So there's a, a hidden paragraph separator on the end here. If that's being deleted by checking the sub run offset and length is longer than the paragraph, or equal to the paragraph is the main condition we're looking for, then we remember that this paragraph needs to be joined with the next one, okay? And joined with the next one after the intervening ones have been deleted. 
So at the end here, we look to see whether we can join the two paragraphs. We get the two paragraphs and then we just add the text from the second one to the first one and then remove the second one. So that handles that case of deleting that range and joining the two paragraphs into one. Okay, that's the delete operator. Um, there's a few other checks and so forth in here, like we're making sure the range is normalized. You can look at the code for all that yourself if you like. Okay, let's move on to insert. Insert is just basically the opposite operator operation, but it's uh, implemented quite differently. So the first thing we do is we find the paragraph where we're actually inserting the text. Okay, this is similar to what we were using in the uh, navigate function. Um, I'm not handling non uh, text paragraphs at the moment. We'll look at that later when we implement features around that area. And then we split the text according to this. So this is the Unicode paragraph separator operate character. Okay, it's what we use to tell the text document that we actually want to break a paragraph break at a point in the text that we're inserting. Okay, so we split the text into an array of parts and if there is only one part, it's just a basic insert text. Okay, so this is our text block insert function that we looked at last time. Uh, no styling on any of these operations. This is all just assuming the styling of surrounding text. We insert the text. If there is one of these characters, at least one, then we've got to do a bit of manipulation here to um, insert the text correctly. So just to show what I mean, I've created on the text editor view, I've inserted just some test code here so that if you hit the F1 key, it inserts apples, pears, bananas with paragraph separators in between. So if we look at what this will do, what this will do, let's just say we were to hit the F1 key now, then there's a few things that need to be done. So the first thing we do is we split the paragraph into two at the insertion point, and this becomes paragraph A, and this becomes paragraph B, um, according to the comments here. We then, as mentioned, we'll have three strings here, apples, pears, and bananas. The first string gets appended to paragraph A, so we'll be typing apples there. The last string will be prepended to paragraph B, so that's bananas there. And then any intervening strings are inserted as new paragraphs in between. Okay, so split the paragraph append the first string to paragraph A, prepend the last string to paragraph B, and then create paragraphs for the intervening strings. So just to show that working, if I was to press the F1 key, you can see it's inserted those three uh, strings. Okay, now at the moment, we're only really ever inserting one paragraph separator, which is the equivalent of doing this, uh, but we're future-proofing ourselves a little bit here for that. Okay, so let's have a look at the text editor view. You can see I've added these on insert, on backspace, and on delete functions. They're pretty straightforward, but we'll just run through them quickly. So on the delete key being pressed, if there's no range, we actually shift select to the right one character, okay, and delete the one character to the right. If we're at the end of the document, we won't be able to move to the right, so we just quit out early. We then call the document to do the deletion, so that's the method we just looked at. And then we update our selection to the start of what was deleted. Backspace is similar, except we're navigating to the left. Again, we quit out early if we couldn't, because we're at the top of the document, and then we call the same function to actually do the work. And then insert text. If there was a selection already, we delete it, so that's typing over a selection. We then call our insert function, insert the text, and update our selection. Now, some of this code is temporary and will be updated, particularly the uh, updating this selection. Uh, when we do uh, undo, redo, um, and multiple views, we'll be moving this code here, but it's good enough for now. So the way these functions are called, oops. So this is GUI kit telling us that characters have been typed and we just insert the characters. This is my test function, ignore that. And then the return key, if the shift key is pressed, we insert a soft line break, otherwise it's a hard uh, 
paragraph break. And delete and backspace keys just map to those two functions. Okay, so that's it. So the editor edit side of this editor is now basically working. Um, there's still going to be a bit of manipulation around um, the way these functions are used, the insert and delete functions. These will become more internal functions once we do undo redo. Um, but what we've got now is a good way to test the logic and make sure that it all seems to be working. And so far so good. It looks It's looking good. It feels good. The editor seems to be responsive and I'm quite happy with the progress we've made. Okay, so that's it for this video. In the next video I think I will look at undo redo next because I think it's going to have a pretty big impact on those insert and uh, delete methods and it'd be good to get that uh, kind of under control and sorted out. Okay, thanks guys. If you've got questions you can find me on Twitter at Top10Software and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks, bye.